Welcome back to the latest episode of Conference Chatter TV. My name is Eric Sorrentino. I'm the KUSports.com Big 12 blogger. I'd like to wish everyone out there a happy holidays this holiday season. As you can see in the background, this Christmas tree is pretty nice. My roommates just got it, so I figured I'd have to include it in the latest episode here today. Now, the menorah is coming. Uh, December kind of crept up on us very quickly here. Next thing I knew, November was already history, and uh, didn't, didn't even know it was December already, so it's uh, time flies, and uh, happy holidays to everybody out there. Uh, Hanukkah is upcoming as well. I think it's next Friday is the, is the first day, of course, and so just like to wish everyone happy holidays out there. So we are previewing today the Big 12 championship game between Nebraska and Texas. It's going to take place this Saturday at 7 p.m., in Arlington on ABC. The Longhorns undefeated, 12-0 overall, 8-0 in conference. They're number three in the country, and they're going up against the Big 12 North champion, Nebraska Cornhuskers, 9-3 overall, 6-3 in the Big 12. And they actually uh, got into the Associated Press Top 25 this last week, entering at number 21 in time for the Big 12 championship game. Both teams appearing in their fifth Big 12 championship game, and so we'll see how this one shapes out. I'd like to go over some strengths of both teams real fast and then make a prediction. We'll start with Nebraska, and there's no question about it. It's no secret that the defense is the strength of this entire team. They have earned that black shirts label this season under Coach Bo Pelini. They're third in the country in scoring defense, and the defense is so good that it's really single-handedly been winning them ball games. They're on a five-game winning streak, and the defense has played a large part in that five-game winning streak. Uh, the offense surely is not winning them games. They are 92nd in the country in total offense. Um, and so you, you've, you've seen Nebraska this year. Really, they've, they've won uh, in some ugly ways, and they've lost in some ugly ways as well. I think the best example of this defense really stepping up and carrying the team had to come in that OU game. The score was 10-3. to Nebraska won it. But the only touchdown scored in that entire game was that one-yard touchdown pass from Zach Lee to Ryan Hill. And how did the Huskers' offense get in that position? Well, of course, it was off an interception off uh, Landry Jones, and they took it down to the one-yard line, and Nebraska scored. So if the Huskers want to uh, beat Texas, that's how they're going to have to do it. They're going to have to get great play from their defense and uh, have the offense show up and, and uh, take advantage of, the, of the, the field position that the defense is trying to create for them. Uh, the Huskers' defense, 14 turnovers in the midst of this five-game winning streak. So they've really, really been capitalizing. Look for them to do that against Texas, or try to, of course, against Colt McCoy and against a Texas offense that really has struggled to run the football for the majority of the season. When you look at Texas uh, and the strengths of this team, it's a top-10 defense led by the scheming of coordinator Will Muschamp. But I think that the real strength of this team, it comes from the quarterback position. It comes from the senior. It comes from the leader, and that's Colt McCoy. When he's on, the Longhorns are extremely difficult to beat, and he's running the ball more now. You saw last week in that Thanksgiving game, 179 rushing yards at Texas A&M. It's a very impressive performance. Of course, had that six, signature 65-yard touchdown scamper, and that really put him back in the Heisman race, but he's just been playing really well recently. He's always had accuracy throwing the ball. Of course, he set that single-season record last year, and this year, uh, not quite that he's not, I, don't, I think it was like 75 or 76 percent of his passes completed last year. It's not quite that big this year, but he's, he's the only uh, quarterback in the Big 12 to complete at least 70 percent of his passes this season. And so he's, he's been on target this year. And so if McCoy's connecting with Jordan Shipley and, and uh, Malcolm Williams, who's really come on lately with two straight 100 yard receiving games, it's going to be tough for Nebraska to win. Nebraska, they have to get pressure on McCoy. They must uh, flush him out of the pocket and show why that front four is one of the best in the country. If they don't do that, if they give McCoy all day to pick apart that defense, you know he's gonna he's gonna tear him apart, and uh, and Texas will win this game. Uh, I don't think that happens. I think this is a very close game. The Nebraska defense, I think, is too good to really sit back and let McCoy dominate this game. The line on this game is the Longhorns by 14 points. I think it's closer than that uh, in this game. I've been saying that for a couple weeks now, that if these two teams were me, it'd be close. I'm going to stick with that prediction. I'm going Texas 24, 
Nebraska 21. I think it'll be very close. I think Nebraska covers because of its stellar defense, but Texas is on a mission. Texas is going to play for the national championship this season. I think McCoy steps up. I think the defense capitalizes on a rather inept Nebraska offense, and the Horns escape with a victory. But I think this one will be a very close game, which we really haven't seen in Big 12 championships game uh, championship games of late. They've all been blowouts. Um, you remember, of course, last year, Oklahoma, just with the pounding of Missouri. I don't think it's quite like that. I think the, the South still prevails, uh, but it's going to be a close one there in Arlington. So I hope you guys all enjoy the game this weekend, uh, Saturday, 7 p.m. I know my eyes will be fixed to the TV for that one, and uh, I will be back this weekend to discuss how that game went down. So everybody enjoy the game. Happy holidays, and we'll talk to you again very soon. Thanks a lot.